Today we will look at rotational kinematics. Rotational, not circular, rotational kinematics. So what do we mean by rotational motion? What we mean is basically a body spinning on its axis. Not moving from left to right or up and down, or back and forward, but simply rotating on an axis. So we want to talk about the kinematics. We want to describe that motion and we want to do this with analogy with what we would call regular or translational motion. So what do I mean by translational versus rotational? When I talk about translational motion, what I'm talking about is the motion of a body through space, treating it as a point-like object. So for example, I could have a block that moves from here to there. That, would, that motion going from here to there corresponds to translational. And by the way, it's translational no matter what path I take. We treat the body as a point and we ask what is the path of the point. In contrast, rotational motion, I'm basically interested in the block, but I'm only interested in the spinning motion of the block. If I have an axis of rotation, I'm interested in how the box spins around the axis of rotation. In this case, we have to treat the body as something other than a point. A point is not an adequate to describe the rotation. So in order to do this, I'm going to use my turntable again, but now instead of the badger, I'm going to use the whole turntable as the object whose rotational motion I'm going to consider. So let's talk about the rotation of that turntable. So to do that, I'm going to take something called an analogy table. Basically, this is an um, uh, analogy where I'm going to take uh, the analogy of motion between translational and rotational. So everything that we're going to do is by analogy. So start with position. So translational position is usually indicated by X or Y or Z and it's a length that's some distance along a number line. Rotational motion, basically how far I'm moving along is some angle. I'm going to call that rotational position angle or heading and it's in radians which is a unitless quantity. So for the turntable, for example, here's our turntable, if I've got a marked, I've basically marked a, a, a radius, and I can measure the position of that radius as an angle relative to the zero heading, which I've marked here, then I can call that angle theta, and I can call the position, the rotational position, theta. So for example, I, if often you will hear the translational position known as linear coordinate, and the rotational is angular. So now velocity, that's the time derivative of the position. In the same way, I can define the angular velocity, the rotational velocity, omega, is equal to the time derivative of the angle, d theta dt is omega. So that's the angular or rotational velocity, omega. By analogy, I can say that the acceleration, uh, which is the time derivative of the velocity, is in rotational form, alpha, that's the Greek letter alpha, is going to be defined as d omega dt, which is the time derivative of the angular velocity. So for example, here I am moving with some angular velocity omega, and as I speed up faster, alpha is positive, that's positive angular acceleration, going faster and faster. And likewise, if I kind of put my hand on the wheel to slow it down, uh, it's decelerating, that corresponds to negative alpha, so omega decreases down back to zero. I can, now that I have the tools for kinematics, I can do the special case. So again, here's my analogy table continued. What? Translational, analogy, rotational. So special case of constant acceleration. So we know how to do this in one dimension. We have it. the equations that a is equal to a constant, the velocity is equal to v naught plus a t, that's what we learned in the first week in class, and the position x is equal to x naught plus v naught t plus one half a t squared. That's the special case of constant acceleration. Rotationally, I could say alpha, if alpha is a constant, then omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t, perfectly analogous and theta is equal to theta naught plus omega naught t plus one half alpha t squared. 
In other words, the rotational equations are completely analogous kinematically to the translational ones. What about dynamics? Well, the key for dynamics is Newton's second law, F nat equals ma. What is the analog for rotations? Well, we got an equality, and obviously a is analogous to alpha, so that goes there, but what about mass? We're going to come up with a new thing, I, which we call the rotational inertia, sometimes known as the moment of inertia, and tau, the net, is now the analog of force that's called the net torque. The net torque. So, we now have an equation, tau equals I alpha, which is the rotational analog of Newton's second law. It's the angular form of Newton's second law. And we will take a good look at that next week.